Hey, Randy Joe here, and today we're going to be checking out the long-awaited, much-anticipated return of JPEG Mafia in the form of the album I Laid Down My Life For You. Now, it has been that long since we've heard JPEG Mafia in some capacity, um, seeing as last year we heard him on the wonderful Scaring the Hose with Danny Brown, an incredible album, uh, my second favorite album of the year last year. And we've also heard JPEG Mafia appear on multiple albums since his last solo album LP, such as on the album Vultures, Kanye West's album Vultures, of course, where he did some production credits on there, uh, to much of fans' sort of dismay. I thought he, he added some much-needed oomph to the album of Vultures, even though I was not the biggest fan of it overall. I did like JPEG Mafia's contributions that seemed like they were pretty much apparent on some of the tracks there. However, this is the first solo album of his since 2021's album LP, which was one of my favorite albums of that year as well. He is one of my favorite rappers in the rap game right now, one of my favorite producers right now, and... All My Hairs Are Cornballs, which you can also see in the background there, is an album that I would consider to be pretty much a perfect album. Um, I do think it is JPEG Mafia's artistic peak so far. However, maybe today, I Lay Down My Life For You, will, will be the new reigning champion of his discography. With 14 tracks and 41 minutes, most of the tracks here are actually more on the shorter side. You're getting a lot of two-minute bangers. So let's just jump into it, see how they turn out. Um, let's go. If I was an NBA player, I'd be Dylan Brooks, but worse. Right off the bat, we've got this. I'm Debo. We are not very apparent drums. Mmm. Again, as abrasive as ever, very punk his sound is. Holy hell. Noisy, abrasive, very punk, but she teased a lot in LP. Holy hell, this chorus. Kind of, uh, not just punk, but leading into a little bit of metal territory with those riffs, those guitar riffs. Holy. Jesus, that verse, incredible production. Dialing it back, I love that. Right back into that. Holy hell, what a, I scream this in the mirror before I interact with anyone was the opening track. Incredibly loud, metal-esque. Um, very punk aesthetic throughout the chorus really hits hard kind of bashes you over the head with his production but on verse three he he matches the energy with his rapping abilities and the intensity of the production i feel like perhaps some of the most aggressive we've heard peggy in quite some time uh and you know as always very direct kind of politically charged very Kind of spiteful hateful sort of lyrics throughout par for the course from what i expect him but at the same time really pushing that punk aesthetic that i feel like he teased um on albums like lp let's keep going this is one of the singles from the album so i've already heard it and i am a fan of this one but let's get into it sin mido i think is the name of this one. how you pronounce it Big booty house. You niggas is this. I love how much he isolates on this album so far. On the first track, he really focused on the drums and isolating that kind of rattly sort of hi-hat. Whereas this one here, it seems like he focuses so much more on the uh, the vocal sample there. And then he plays with that. Bald. 
Such a hard hit. Kind of reminds me of Basement Jax as well. I'm getting Basement Jax sort of energy. R.I.P. Aaron Carter. Die too young. Super punchy production on this one though. Like it, it hits you hard and that's where the Basement Jacks comparison I have comes in here. Mm. Those clap effects. Again, really reinforcing that sound. God, super high energy. Uh, banger after banger so far. I'll be right there is this one here. Sin Mieto, Mido, however it's pronounced, is a fantastic track. As expected, I've heard it before. But let's go into I'll be right there. Hey, Jades don't walk away is the sample there. Hmm. This one's already got a bit of a slower start. Quieter, more hushed. Love how muffled and crunchy it sounds. Yet these synths are very glimmery and just clear as day up against the crunchy backdrop. Oh. There's that sample. Pitched up, kind of like that chipmunk sound. Oh. Oh, this bass line. This is really laid back in its sound. Ooh. Typical trash talking, as we'd expect. I just love how sweet this one sounds. Oh, and his delivery? Kind of like singing and rapping. Oh, another throwback to that previous track there. Again, this one's super pretty. I can't stress that enough. As crunchy as the background is, the bass line on that one throughout. Probably the most R&B focused, I feel like we've heard him in a minute. Mm. Let's go into It's Dark and Hell is Hot. A reference to the late DMX. Okay. Some Spanish to open this thing up. This one's really different. More airy. Such an ominous tone to this one as well. I love this sample throughout. Also reminded me of... Some of this album, this track here specifically, also reminded me of... I'm going to go back a bit just to get that back in there in a minute. Reminded me of Boards of Canada. For some reason, I'm really getting some sort of ambient Boards of Canada kind of vibes throughout this one. Um, specifically, their album, Music Has the Right to Children. Uh, again, don't know if that's intentional, but the way he's kind of glitching out and using this sample throughout this Brazilian sample feels very reminiscent of the sort of chopped up samples on that album. Oh, a little Drake diss. Which, Drake disses are a dime a dozen this year, but they've always been a dime a dozen in Peggy's career. He has thrown out so many disses at Drake, I feel like 
before he even really blew up the way he has. So this is par for the course for Peggy. In fact, it'd be abnormal to not have a, a Drake disc, especially in this time. Man, the way he's twisting his vocals and pushing them and muffling them on this album quite a bit. This might be the most wild and inventive he's gotten with vocals specifically. What was that sample at the end? Little Asian sample kind of slid in there. It sounded like, um, again, expected, but it's always it's always when you don't expect it. I should say, Vince Staples on this one here. New Black History with Vince Staples. We love Vince Staples on this channel. I haven't covered him yet, surprisingly, but I am a fan of him. Fan of his work. Uh, Big Fish Theory is a fantastic album, and I have heard a couple of his other albums that, for some reason, forgetting the name of. Uh, and Summertime 06, that's the other one I'm thinking of. I remember listening to that one a while back. I do want to get back to it. But Vince Staples, every time I hear him, especially in his features too, he goes in, he goes hard. He honestly sometimes steals the show. But let's see how he is here with Peggy. New Black History. Future. Feature sample. Oh, God, those drums. Vince with his monotone laid-back delivery as expected. Oh. Love Vince's staples. Love his cadence. Love his sort of arpeggio delivery and the drumming super bombastic explodes over Vince sometimes um man Peggy is pushing his production maybe harder than he has in a long time it's feeling like it's getting as experimental as ever really pushing the synth work too which throughout LP I love the synth work And I love to see the focus he has on it in this album. Another uh, diss at Drake there. He's catching plenty of strays this album. Not sure how I feel about the, the feature sample. Where is this going? Ugh. Peggy. We're only on the sixth track here. Every track is really pushing the envelope in some way or another, but the production on this album is clearly you know, center focus throughout this entire thing. Vince was fantastic on that album or on that track. I liked him more than Peggy. If we're going to do a little bit of comparison there, just his, his cadence and his delivery was fantastic as expected from Vince. He is a killer MC, um, underrated as well. Don't rely on other men is again, another single from this album. I've heard it. Uh, let's get into it, man, this album though has been abrasive as hell. I hear you went down, 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 I think this is a I different version down. because the fact that it has a different, it doesn't show the streams. I'm assuming this is... Yeah, the original is 314, this is 251. Hmm. Different version of it. Can take the shit the veteran way the Kimber the Glock the mini to the train. I ain't going nowhere. I'm right in your face. Make it short. Give me a nigga to break. Is that a new verse? 
Oh my god, those weird like alien synths in the background there. Sampling Succession, Brian Cox. There's definitely some added rising synths on the background here. This is a new outro, completely different from the single. It sounds like we've got vocals added as well. Are we not getting the, the guitar solo as strong anymore? It would seem that way. Okay, uh, new outro, incredible new outro. I do miss the original guitar solo that was sampled on the other one. I think it was a sample on the other one, less. But the, the ethereal kind of outro there, the way it kind of, you know, rose to those very heights with those kind of angelic vocals and the synth work as well, feels like it was ascending. Beautiful outro. Uh, Freaky's verse, short, quick, sweet, hits you over the head, and then again we rise away and we ascend to the heavens with that outro. Loved it. I can't tell if I like it. I think I like it more than the original single, but I do miss that that guitar. Let's go into a vulgar display of power. A lot of short tracks. Again, none of the tracks we've heard so far have been over three minutes. This one just under three. Oh. Oh. Not sure how I feel about the go, 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 I will not fall. This track, again, very strong punk vibes throughout this one. Like, punk, rap, rock kind of mix. Super in your face, very abrasive. I love it. God, it's fantastic so far. This is the direction I wanted to see Peggy go in when he teased these elements on LP. Mm. You know what? I do like that go, go, go section. I changed my mind. Oh, I like this kind of gentle outro. We're really simmering down here. Oh. Is that Peggy? No, that's not Peggy. I don't know who that was, but I like that sample. It sounded very pretty. It's going to X Military. X Military. I know a lot of people were speculating when this uh, track list leaked. I saw a few days ago that this was somehow connected to Death Grips. Peggy has made it clear he's not a fan of Death Grips. He doesn't really um, listen to Death Grips. I don't imagine he's going to collab with Death Grips. This is not a Death Grips collab. I don't expect a Death Grips sample. Uh, Ex-military, the man was in the army. He is ex-military. I think that is the point of the track here. Could it be a subtle nod at Death Grips? Perhaps. I'm sure he was aware of it when he put the, the title on it, but does not mean it's the reason. Well, let's see. Maybe, maybe, oh, oh, a classic sample. I heard you got dirt on me. My country encouraged me. I just bought a dirty piece. Really throwing it back. This one's the longest track at five minutes. 
I love the very clear vocals here. Ooh. Talk about different sex offenders there. Is this um a dig at Drake again? Who knows? Oh, a little B switch here. But still playing with the same melody. This track's fantastic. I love the way it's slowly developing. Scaring the hose. Hmm. Another switch up. I pledge allegiance to my niggas, my hoes, my bitches, and me. Every morning I get down on my knees for a god that I can't see. Getting very vulnerable here. Come with a cost. Every end of slide in the crowd when I see your man. Ooh. I'm not just throwing paint at the wall. I don't do nothing but fall. I can't be racist. I'm chasing a paint. Peggy's showing his very uh, differing sort of personality traits that he he you know shows on his albums and online the very hateful angry side of him comes out well at the same time we get a much more vulnerable peggy on this track too i really love how uh, diverse he's being the aggression mm. the lies don't stick. Narratives ain't fitting. strings here really pretty run it up run it up Ethereal string. No matter who the champ is in your eyes, Peggy's gonna claim that title. I think that's his message. His energy throughout this album. Like there's that hunger in him still. I feel like most artists lose once they hit their peak. But with every album, it feels like Peggy is still striving to be better than he's been. Can't say that for every artist. Oh, God. Dial it back down. Bring it back to a classic 90s sample. While still pushing forward with the rest of that production there. A really great blend of the old and the new. Ex-military. A fantastic track showing different sides of Peggy's personality as well. No complaints on that one. Uh, maybe the best track so far. I feel like given its length, it gives so much more time for it to, to breathe and to grow. Um, for a track full of bangers, I mean, that one was a banger as well. But a, a lengthy one, a bit longer. I loved it. Uh, let's go into Jai Had Joe. Every time I get the stick in and I come around with that Kimber, I'm wearing a mask. These hoes still in a really eerie. They coming up short on pieces of cash. And I take all the background moans in the background there. Break up. These are few of my favorite bands. I'm still a shady, but I'm not a stand. Oh, crazy. I check my hand. Oh, I'm an Eminem reference there. He's saying he's not a fan of Eminem. Money, the money, the drugs, and the land. Godzilla ain't coming. Again. Back to his yelling. Reminding me of the track uh, ad End Credits off of LP specifically. Oh. Terminally Online. We've all been there. Perhaps my least favorite track so far. But if I know Peggy, I know that with more listens, that will most likely change. Um. Because even the, the tracks that I don't typically like of his sometimes or might not instantly connect with me, I listen to it a few more times. And before I know it, it becomes one of my favorites, perhaps, on the album. That that has happened. So let's just keep going. Uh, JPEG Ultra with Denzel Curry. A longer way to collab. Out the trenches for you flop. Like that motherfucking money and that motherfucking bread. So get it all on your bitch head. This isn't the uh, introspective Benzo that we've gotten. God, the multi 
syllabic rhyme scheme to kick off his verse there has been just fire. The A-P-E-P-E-A-D-D past three rhyme scheme. Loved that. Constantly rhyming very specific letters. Continuing it. Love the very um, kind of jazzy instrumental on this one. Super upbeat. Incredibly bombastic production, as expected, but also very jazzy this time around with these loud horns. Feel like going to casino. <laughs> Constant humor in his lines. Incredible verse from Peggy, especially as he picks up that energy in that last little block there. Is this a reference? A reference to Playboy Cardi and Destroy Lonely? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but. I don't know why he gets a little homophobic there, but I mean, I know he doesn't mean it like that. Records nobody wants to hear. Lots of disses, as expected from Peggy. Oh. Acoustics is coming in. I love this switch up. Like, gentle, ethereal, oh, and beautiful looping acoustic. Sounds familiar, but it could be just connecting it to another acoustic element. Wow. Um... Let's give that a pause. JPEG Ultra with Denzel Curry. We've been waiting for the JPEG Denzel collab for years now, it feels like. He has been teasing it. How, last year, he heavily teased it. Denzel Curry seemed to be teasing it. Where's the full length album? Where is it? If it's going to sound anything like this track with the insane horn work and uh, kind of jazzy production, I would love to hear that. Mm, you know, less weird i would say maybe than scaring the hose is what i expect from it i expect a more just bombastic banger after banger kind of jazzy sort of focus whereas scaring the hose uh feels like it's takes the weirdness of danny and pushes that envelope with jpeg mafia's production um so curry peggy get together release the album because jpeg ultra fantastic those horns beautiful either on or off the drugs is this one here i've named this, this one, one jpeg, JPEG. classical tag for him there mm. kind of r&b here look i ain't really in the flash and i feel like an accident i'm never chose yes Baby talking voice of passion. sweeter peggy no matter what he's high energy man like a singing rap delivery here is this about his albums because this is his fifth album first one was black ben carson second was veteran so he's saying the second one put him in the deep i assume he means because he blew up uh, third one was sick no disease all my heroes are cornballs is a phenomenal album if that's what he's trying to say it's pretty much perfect like i said earlier and the fourth i had to rush to complete it i assume he's talking about lp maybe because the clearance issues so that's what i'm gathering from that line i really like the like i said the uh, kind of autobiographical approach he's taking with this track yeah. the streets and my mind is filled with demons that's why i be eating these bitches like sarah because the strap again i just love the just more serious it's not just a facade that i can see or standing kind of melancholy i'm michael jackson in the mirror 
Oh, the strings too. He's playing a lot more with strings on this album, it would seem. Very pretty track. Oh. That was a beautiful track. Oh my goodness. One of the best tracks on the album. Easily. Short, sweet, direct, a clear as day Peggy on the vocals. Wow. Let's keep going. Loop it and leave it. Reference to the LP line. Work so much you think Peggy was Mexican. Wow. Classic common line. We've heard it. I, I don't know how many times on the sound we've heard so far that uh, Peggy has claimed he has fucked my bitch or fucked some other girl's bitch. At, at the end of the day, someone's getting fucked. A classic trash talker. Elite trash talker. Long outro with this one here. Super shimmery. With these strings, with these strings that constantly soar on some of these tracks, with the backup vocals that, again, really add these kind of ascending ethereal elements, um, and then with the kind of, with the cross on this album cover as well, Peggy's getting a little bit more religious here. Uh, maybe some gospel elements. He's really stretching himself out stylistically on this album i feel like he's gone in so many directions a beautiful array i feel like this is perhaps his most diverse project so far so let's just keep going we got two more tracks but it's been fantastic don't put anything on the bible again another religious reference there oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh yeah. buzzy lee on this track Oh, she was on the Dots Freestyle remix. Hmm, didn't know that. And part of John Wayne with Denzel Curry. Great track. Great album. Again, acoustics and very just beautifully angelic vocals. Adding to the, again, heavenly sound of the album. This guitar, it's not just a simple loop, it's not a, a simple sample. A full melody from start to finish there. Oh, and then we switch over. So Peggy can come in here. Very smooth beat. Under the cap and carry still the feeling. I never chill cause y'all really want a nigga broke. Like fuck these. I love the very laid back approach. Not just on this track, but the last couple tracks of Peggy's. Peggy really uh kinda laying down his soul on this one. God, the strings to this album have been fantastic. Let's go into I Recovered From This. Let's close out the album. And then we'll talk the whole thing. Janet Jackson. Underrated. I know she's a Jackson, but come on. Give her flowers already. Mm, heartbreak. My bitch never got taken from me. I lost her myself. My bitch never got comfort from me. I needed too much help. Peggy speaking on a, a breakup here. Again, Peggy, super vulnerable, uh, especially in this back end of the album. Loving it. I'm loving how in his feels he is. Do one hour a week. I think I need more help. I'm actual love, actual heart, actual care. Niggas get mad at me when I call out the hate because they hate me. No debate. All Peggy here just outwardly stating that this this tough guy demeanor that he often portrays 
is an act, um, which he's alluded to before, but I feel like he's never been so blunt with it, so, you know, clear and transparent about his sort of personality and what he puts out. From bitch to girl. Love the transparency in this track. And I love... One of my favorite things about All My Hairs Are Cornballs is the kind of loose vocal snippets throughout it where just because like conversing, it's like a conversation Peggy's having, whether it be with himself or others, kind of adds to the rawness of the whole thing. Wow. And that's it. Let's talk the whole thing. Um, quick, Really quickly, we'll recap. I recovered from this. Like I said, love the transparency in it. Love the very heartbreak focus of it. I feel like we don't get Peggy talking on love too often. And it's really nice to hear. It's a nice little avenue to take. Um, you know, as a longtime fan, him still exploring themes that he has not yet explored is always exciting. As well as exploring new sounds. Like on this album, in general, it's a super, incredibly well-diverse uh, album in its sound it's got punk elements it's got metal elements it has gospel elements it has uh, you know your typical noise kind of rap rock industrial sound that he he's kind of done in the past very experimental the synth work as well um which was really pushed quite a bit on lp loved hearing it all come back here and it feels like he has kind of pushed it further on this album i feel like he's really grown when it comes to synths and he certainly has a better understanding and a better direction with it than I feel like he did on LP which I still love that album I think that album is fantastic um, and I love the synth work throughout it but it feels like here you could see the very clear growth in him as an artist um, and even as a person as he talks more transparently about himself in the back uh, half of the album another thing speaking on albums themes the very religious themes throughout this album are fantastic i feel like again we haven't heard peggy get this i want to say serious about a theme before it feels very cohesive throughout the album's production again matches that very religious tone and i love it i feel like he's also made a better religious style album than kanye ever has and kanye has been trying to do it for like I don't know, almost a decade at this point. I feel like the best he's gone at it was some of the stuff on Life of Pablo, whereas I Lay Down My Life for You, JPEG Mafia here, uh, he's already done the whole religious aspect better than Kanye ever did. Might be a hot take, but I'm saying it. I don't care. I think this is a fantastic release. Ex-Military, five minutes long, fantastic. I love the way it developed. I loved how careful and meticulous it felt. I love the switch-ups throughout um jpeg ultra with curry curry's delivery fantastic peggy on that track too his verse just rattling off was like a, like a machine gun at times vince staples too like i said when i got into that track i feel like vince often can sometimes outperform the artist he's on i would say vince outperformed peggy on that track and that's not a dig at peggy at all it's just vince is such a fantastic underrated rapper and his sort of flow and cadence throughout that that verse was brilliant really no complaints i feel like this is only going to grow on me more and man peggy it has continued to evolve continue to grow in a way that is still fascinating refreshing he never feels stale it always feels like a jpeg mafia track but you can always feel the very distinct era of the direction he's taking things in because again like lp had like the the banger after banger kind of synth work um all my hairs are cornballs feel felt very organic and raw in its delivery while at the same time incorporated elements of pop and r&b veteran was another one where it's banger after banger but felt much more aggressive and again when i hear any of those tracks production wise you can hear i feel like the distinct era of peggy and this album i lay down my life for you is certainly no exception to the rule it is fantastic with potential, I'm saying it now because I thought every track here was fantastic, potential to be album of the year. 
But that does it for today's video. If you like this video, please hit like, subscribe to follow along in listening to more uh, albums throughout the year, new releases, old releases, whatever albums I am interested in or fans suggest down in the comment down below. I will check out. I, I'm interested to hear as much music as possible and react with you guys. So, as always, my name is Randy Joe. I appreciate you watching, and I'm signing off.